Martin herself personified Luba, she became intoxicated with the love of God. So she approached Lord Chaitanya in wonder. And Lord Chaitanya requested her to save Krishna Prema for someone who would come later, who was called Naratandas. So she accepted that. But she said, how will I recognize this person? This, um, Lord Chaitanya said, you will recognize this person, Naratam, because when he takes bath in your waters, they will again flood from his taking bath. So then you please hand over this Krishna Prema. So she did that as a service for Lord Chaitanya. So Naratam Das was born as a prince. His father was a king of that uh, region around Kateri. There were many kings through India at the time. Uh, and uh, so he had a very um, opulent life. He was a very beautiful child. His eyes were like lotus petals. And uh, he was also a very peaceful child. Wherever his mother placed him, he would remain. And you know how kids wriggle and run and want to do things. He was very peaceful. So uh, he was also very qualified and highly intelligent. So at a young age, he was able to master Sanskrit language. And um, that's not so easy <laughs> uh, to master in boyhood. So <clears throat> whenever he was and instructed something, he could remember it. He had one of those shootidar memories, someone who can hear and keep it within. And he started to study many, many scriptures. But the problem was, the more he studied, the more he realized this material world is a horrible place. And actually, he just became disinterested at a young age in the material world. So this was a great concern for his father, who they only had the one child, and um, you know, but they they couldn't change that. He was um, very sort of uh, very detached. And then he heard the pastimes about Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, and he became very attached. He would chant Goranga Nityananda. He became very attached to their holy names and their pastimes, and that took over his consciousness, even when he was young. So he, um, he actually wanted to go, he had this desire to go to Vrindavan. Then when he was 12 years old, he heard his parents making an arrangement for his marriage. <laughs> which was not tasteful to him in one bit um, at all. So at the same time, that night, Lord Nityananda came to him in a dream. And um, Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, told him that um, it will be calamitous for you to marry. And he had asked him to please go to the Padmavati River and take your bath there. So Naratam Das, of course, Lord Nityananda had come and he was always meditating on Lord Nityananda, so he was very ecstatic that Lord Nityananda had come and he went the next day and he took bath in the Padmavati River. So as Lord Chaitanya predicted, the river suddenly flooded and overflowed into the village. All the villagers were wondering what's happening. Um, and. Um, <clears throat> Padmavati realized, and this is that great soul. So she took <clears throat> in her arms, <clears throat> she took um, this uh, prema that the Lord had left, and she said, Dear Naratam Das, Lord Chaitanya has re left a reservoir of love of God here, especially for you. This wealth belongs to you. Take it, for I can no longer bear the burden of holding it any longer. Take this love and distribute it everywhere. So Naratam put out his palms to receive it, and then she said, where will you keep it? 
And she said, oh, great soul, if you drink this love, you will become intoxicated. <laughs> but Narutam took and he drank and he became totally overwhelmed with ecstatic love. And it's described that his dark complexion at that time vanished and he took on a golden hue. And later on he described, when he was in Vrindavan, he described to his guru how a golden boy entered my heart at that time. And he just lo lost all sort of external consciousness, became completely um, laughing and crying and dancing and didn't know what was going on. And his parents, when they saw him, they didn't even recognize him because he was this laughing golden body when they had left their son Haratam there. So they were quite perplexed what would happen, what had happened. So he would lose consciousness and come again to consciousness. And, but uh, he actually begged them, please, may I go to Vrindavan? And, um, but they, they didn't know what to do. You know, he was the king's son, he was the heir to the throne. They brought an exorcist, exorcist to try to get out this, the bad spirits that had taken over him. But uh, nothing worked. And um, <clears throat> so he devised a way in the end that he could get away and go to Vrindavan and he set off the, on that, that path to Vrindavan. And uh, all those who were sent to try to bring him back were unsuccessful. So Narottam Das, on that trip, he was so ecstatic and so looking forward to seeing the associates of Lord Chaitanya. He just, because he knew, of course, Lord Chaitanya had left, but he wanted to meet the Goswamis and Vrindavan and all these wonderful souls that he'd been hearing about. He, he was um, transfixed. So he wasn't even really taking care, uh, he had bare feet, he, despite the fact that he would lived a prince's life, so, and he would just sleep on the bare earth. So one night, when he was sleeping in his dream, a golden complexioned Brahmana boy came to him and he gave him a pot of milk. And he said, please drink this Narottam and all your fatigue and pain will disappear then it will be easy for you to travel on to Vrindavan. So, and right after that, Sanatan and Rupa Goswamis appeared to him in, in another dream. So he was really ecstatic to see the forms of the Goswamis right in front of him and to smell the sweet fragrance of their bodies. Because that's the thing about a transcendental body. We've got these smelly bodies, but these transcendental personalities, their bodies smell beautifully. And he was just relishing the sight and the flavor of these two Goswamis. So they told him that it was Lord Chaitanya that had given him that milk. And they said, we have come to see you. Get up, drink the milk, and we will go together to Vrindavan. You have been favored by Lord Chaitanya. Because everybody knew Narottam was coming. That when, when Narottam had been left that prema in the Padmavati, then those devotees knew. And there were various letters passed. Lord Chaitanya was writing to the Goswamis and letting them know that a personality called Narottam will, still, will soon come, you know, a, a, an exalted Vaishnava. So they all knew about Narottam. <clears throat> So, of course, once he woke up, he was crying and rolling on the ground. And he drank that milk and off he went to Mathura. So when he arrived at Mathura, uh, he was very ecstatic. Everybody goes to Vishramgat first. And then he went to the birthplace of Lord Krishna. And that place uh, had him fainting and rolling in ecstasy. So <clears throat> Jiva Goswami was informed by his uncles in a dream that Sanat, that uh, Narottam had come and that he should be brought to Vrindavan, given shelter and handed over to Lokanath Goswami. That was another thing that was known. 
Because Narottam Das had asked various people if, if they could initiate him. They all said, no, you're destined to be initiated by Lokanath Goswami. So, <clears throat> um, so the, the devotee um, found Narottam Das in Mathura and brought him to Vrindavan. And the first place Narottam Das wanted to go was Radha Govinda Temple. And when he went to that Radha Govinda temple and saw beautiful Radha Govinda, the original ones now that are in um, Jaipur, he just fainted away in front of him. It's very, very beautiful. So then Lokanath Goswami and Jiva Goswami were informed that uh, this uh, devotee has now fainted in front of Govindaji and they set out and went to Govinda temple. So they saw this prostate form, golden form, lying on the, on the floor, and they were just amazed. And Lokanath Goswami gently went over and placed his hand on, Lokan, on um, Narottam Das's chest. And from the touch of his hand, Narottam Das regained consciousness. And then he grabbed the feet of Lokanath Goswami in great happiness. So Lokanath Goswami said, I knew you were coming. I dreamt of you last night. And out of his causeless mercy, Lord Chaitanya has sent you here. So, <clears throat> so then Jiva Goswami entrusted Narottam Das to Lokanath Goswami's care. And Lokanath Swami took great care of him, instructed him very nicely. Now, he actually requested, initially, please, will you initiate me? But Lokanath Goswami did not want to initiate him because um, just the appearance of um, this young boy, who was only 12 at the time, it, it enabled him to understand that um, Lord Chaitanya had entered his heart somehow. So he just felt like, Oh, he does not need initiation. I'm not going to initiate him. So for one year, Narottam Das was hoping to get initiated. And um, um, no, uh, Lokanath Goswami steadily refused. So Narottam Das was thinking, how can I do some personal service for Lokanath Goswami? So he watched um, where uh, Lokanath Goswami would in the early morning go and pastel, urine, etc. And he took a broom and water and he cleaned that area. So every day Lokanath Goswami went and this area is all clean, what's going on? <laughs> so this went on for a whole year. And then one day Lokanath Goswami got up very early because he wanted to find out what's going on. And there he saw Narottam Das waiting quietly in the dark with a broom. <laughs> So he knew it was Logan, it was um, um, Narottam Das. So they went and they took their bath in the Jumuna and he said, all right, I will, I will initiate you. So there was a beautiful initiation ceremony where he gave him the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And um, he also, he told him that he should chant at least 100,000 names a day. So we chant 27,000 27, names a day. Uh, so it's 64 rounds. And actually it's described that Lokanath Goswami often chanted 200,000 rounds, like names a day. So that's whatever that is, 128 rounds a day. Just because he loved to chant. So his guru explained to him how he should worship Radha Ratan Krishna internally in meditation. So the idea is that guru will give you service. He will give you the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and give you service. So for us in ISKCON, Sula Prabhupada's service was um, very broad for everybody to, you know, distribute books, worship the deity, uh, etc. Chant Hare Krishna. He, he gave instructions to everyone, and for some devotees, he gave special instructions. In this case, Lokanath Goswami had only one disciple, and he instructed Narottam Das all about internally meditating on Radha and Krishna which was so ecstatic for Narottam Das to hear. He was completely blissful. So uh, he 
He was always begging for his spiritual master's mercy and for some qualification, Narottam Das, because he was very humble. So with great devotion, he performed everything that Lokanath Goswami had told him. So one day he had a dream where Srimati Radharani smilingly approached him and she encouraged him in performing his seva to his guru with great faith and devotion. And she praised him for doing his manasi seva with such longing because Loganath Goswami had given him internal service to do for Radha and Krishna and he did that so um, sincerely and, 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 and wonderfully and, and with such dedication that Srimati Radharani herself was so pleased that she came to encourage him. And then she told him that Krishna was coming to her grove at midday and they wanted to make some sweet rice for him. And she begged Narasandas to begin his service. He said, she said, your service is to boil milk every day. Please, can you begin that service today? She also told Narottam that his name was Champaka Manjuri. So Narottam Das was totally astonished. Tears gushing that Srimati Radharani had come. And then he went to Lokanath Goswami, um, you know, to... Well, he didn't exactly tell, but he, he, he was so ecstatic um, and he told a little bit. So just imagine Shimati Radharani coming to you and just giving you personal service. How wonderful is Narottam Das Thakur. So, uh, and, uh, so also that um, the, the thing was his mood was so nice when he was chanting. He was very um, sincerely kind of connecting with the holy name and very much connecting with his service. So Loganath Goswami, of course, was thrilled with the great fortune of his wonderful disciple. So one day as Narottam Das was doing his service, the milk began to boil over and he just picked up the pot and placed it on the ground and he burned his finger. But because he was in trance, he didn't feel it. But when he came back to external consciousness, he had this painful burn and he wrapped it up. So then he was thinking, oh, maybe I've made an offense, what have I done? And he went to Loganath Goswami and he told him what had happened. Loganath Goswami was just ecstatic. And they spent hours talking about this service that he had been given. Um, so of course Loganath Goswami assured him that there was no offense and was just so pleased with um, the reciprocation that Narottam Das was, was getting. So <clears throat> Narottam Das teamed up with some very wonderful devotees. First of all, he began studying himself under Jiva Goswami because we know that uh, all the Goswami's books, they were all given to Jiva Goswami and he, he was there to give diksha to anybody who wanted it instruction to anybody, not instruction, siksha, sorry, to anyone who wanted it. He didn't give people diksha. But um, uh, he, he, that was his charge. Lord Chaitanya had wanted him to take care of them and to distribute them after the Hadha Goswamis left. <coughs> so he was feeling a little anxious that um, <coughs> those books were still in um, Vrindavan and other Vaishnavas around, especially in Bengal, where Lord Chaitanya had had his pastimes in Bengal and Orissa, those devotees didn't have any way to get those wonderful um, Vaishnava scriptures. So he, he instructed both Narottam Das, Shamananda Prabhu, and Srinivas Acharya, who was the exalted disciple of Gopal Bhatta Goswami, he instructed them on all these instructions of the um, of the Goswami. So they were very familiar with the teachings and um, and then he decided that he would actually give the project of taking those books to those three wonderful souls. So he held a big festival at the end of Kartik and invited everybody, fed everybody, made sure all the cooking was done beautifully and personally fed everybody. 
And then he asked the devotees in Vrindavan to bless these three souls with taking these Goswami books across to Bengal and Orissa. And they, they, of course, lovingly gave their blessings. They helped in any way they could. So <laughs> a great bullock cart was brought and that filled up with the Goswami's book, big trunk full, filled up with the Goswami books. So when it came time for them to go, though, everybody was like, oh no, how are we going to bear their separation? Because they were so attached to these beautiful, young, saintly Vaishnavas. And the thought of not having them around was really distressing for everybody, but they knew this had to be done. And then the devotees themselves, they were thinking, yes, we'll go. And they were thinking, no, we have to leave these wonderful devotees in Vrindavan and go across to Bengal and um, maybe we'll never see our gurus again. And, uh, and they also were attached to living in Vrindavan. So it was kind of a real separation thing as they went off on their bullock cart. And it was a long trip. And right before they entered Bengal, the bullock cart at night was stolen. So we, we can't imagine the devastation of these devotees finding the cart stolen, the books gone, and their whole mission totally defeated. So they were just couldn't believe, they'd spent days just sleeplessly wondering what they should do. They sent letters to the devotees in Vrindavan. The devotees in Vrindavan were so devastated that those wonderful Goswami's books were lost that, um, that they were like grief-stricken. And in fact, Krishnadas Kaviraj just went onto the banks of Radhakund and he left his body there in front of Raghunath Das, you know, because he just couldn't bear it, that all those books were gone. So it was a very traumatic thing. And uh, after some time, Srinivas Acharya said, look, I'll try to retrieve the books. You go on with, you've got a preaching, you've got preaching to do. He said this to Naratam and Shamananda, you go on and do your preaching, I will try to retrieve these books. They must be somewhere. You know, there's no monetary value in them. So they were, they felt very distressed. And when, when Naratam does finally arrive back in Kejari, he was, his parents were grieved to see him because he was so upset. But everybody else was so happy to see their, they'd heard the glories of um, Naratam Das from devotees that had been to Vrindavan and they knew how wonderfully well he was doing. So they were all really happy to see him. So Naratam Das continued on with his devotional service. Sometimes he'd be so overcome with love for Krishna, he'd just be rolling on the ground and weeping and weeping. And uh, because of his saintly character and his um, such wonderful um, teachings, Vaishnava teachings, uh, he brought many expert, many devotees together. And uh, then he created um, a group of expert musicians um, and they just flooded the area with melodious, beautiful Krishna Kirtans. Uh, and he also wrote, as we know, many bhajans. And those bhajans are so, they're so concise and they're so succinct. He captures the philosophy in just a few words. And just by, you know, singing those bhajans, we can make, you know, we can make wonderful connections with with the Lord. And Sula Prabhupada wrote about his writings, the prayers of Naratam Das Thakur, this, this sound is above the material platform, and there is no need of understanding the language. It is just like a thunderbolt. Everyone can hear the sound of thunder. There is no misunderstanding. Similarly, these songs are above the material platform, and they crack like thunder in your heart. <laughs> so, and if, if, when you listen to Prabhupada's classes so many times, he quotes Naratam Das Thakur's songs. So they're really important, very valuable. And he loved to sing those songs. There's beautiful tapes of Surya Prabhupada singing many, many songs that you hardly hear sung now. 
but Narottam's songs, and he always sang them with a beautiful devotional mood, and his servants always loved to just come and, and sit and listen, maybe they'd play car shells, and just listen to that devotional mood, even though they didn't sing, they didn't know those bhajans, but they loved to be with Sura Prabhupada when he was singing his songs. So, <clears throat> when Narottam Das had left and gone to Vrindavan so many years before, of course there was no one to take over the kingdom and the parents were so distraught they couldn't no longer they could no longer rule so what happened was um, uh, Narottam Das's father's brother had a son so he was made the king he was called Santosh and Santosh was so happy when Narottam Das came back to Kettery and he built a huge temple complex for him beautiful temple complex uh, it had a large storehouse for food, a kirtan hall, a residence hall, an ashram for devotees, a bathing pond, beautiful gardens, and a guest house. So we'll hear later how Narottam Das um, uh, had the deities carved and six sets of deities and placed in this beautiful temple. But at the time, at this time, he wanted to visit Navadweep. So he had a wonderful trip to Navadweep because he wanted to meet whatever associates were there of Lord Chaitanya still, because some of them were still living. He may have been a little old. And he wanted also to see the pastime places. So it's not really time to go into it, but he met very wonderful devotees. For instance, he met the servant of Lord Chaitanya, Ishan, who was very old and just crying in separation. He met Ishan. He met, he went to Lord Nityananda's house in Karladaka and he met Janavamata and Vasuda, the two wives of Lord Nityananda. And they spent, he spent four days there and they blessed him with, because they could tell Lord Chaitanya, they knew Lord Chaitanya had blessed him because he was so effulgent. And, and then he went various places. He went on to, um, he met Pridai Chaitanya, um, and he met Achyudananda, Advaita son. So he met many great personalities there. Then he went on to Jagannath Puri, and it so happened that as he walked into Puri, um, Gopinath Acharya was there. <laughs> So Gopinath Acharya took him, and because he had been Lord Chaitanya's servant, and he took him to meet all the devotees. They went to the temple, had a wonderful kirtan. Then they took him to um, Haridas Thakur Samadhi, then um, Toda Gopinath. And when he saw that deity where Lord Chaitanya had left inside, the, just sort of went into the knee of Toda Gopinath, he was just unconscious on the floor. So. Um, after that, on the way back to Kettery, he stopped in to see his good friend Shamananda in the Shingapore. And um, Shamananda Prabhu did not want him to go, of course, and they just relished Krishna Kata for days. So when he went back to Kettery, he began to arrange for these deities to be carved. <clears throat> Six sets of Radha Krishna deities. He also had a big blob of marble and he had a big um, Lord Chaitanya carved. So. He wanted to make it a very big festival, and it is a very famous festival, this festival at Kateri. It was the first Gauraponema festival. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> the first thing he did was, once he started the process with the deities being carved, was he wrote to all the Vaishnavas in um, Bengal that he, that he possibly knew or could get contact with. And then he wrote, wrote to various devotees in Orissa, and he invited many devotees to come. So it was a huge festival. And the town of Kedri was wonderful, decorated with beautiful, decorated gateways and you know, lovely um, banana bunches everywhere, and flowers and water pots. And the whole temple complex was made very beautiful and enchanting. So on the eve of the festival, Janava Mata had come and she was making the final arrangements for the installation of the deities. So you know, there's always a first person given worship at these festivals. So Janava Mata was given first worship at the festival. And uh, 
the evening before the actual festival, a big Naga kirtan went on and the devotees were so ecstatic to be together in this way for this very auspicious festival. And then on the, on the day of the festival, it was Srinivas Acharya that was performed the first Abhishek and he had the ceremony of it's called breathing life into the deities. So Srinivas Acharya did that. And um, all the locals came to see, it didn't matter caste or creed, they were just fascinated to see these thousands of beautiful Vaishnavas. And the deities were uh, very exquisitely beautiful, all the six sets of deities that were being installed. <coughs> and the devotees, when they started off the kirtan, and they sort of became drenched in love of God, they, they couldn't even dance properly. <laughs> So <laughs> the devotees began to laugh and shiver and weep and tremble and their hair stood on end. So it was like the en entire district was inundated with love of God during this wonderful Gorkunima festival. So Narottam Das Thakur, he was like merged in an ocean of transcendental happiness throughout the day and night. And <coughs> whenever he danced in ecstasy, he kind of looked like Lord Chaitanya. And um, so when he was asked to lead Kirtan, his, he, had, he had a very sweet voice and he had a unique style, which I've heard has been lost. His Kirtan style has been lost so far as I heard. But it was very unique and beautiful. And the four directions was, and, and that, that if a beautiful vibration in the four directions was rising up to the heavens and just making everybody totally ecstatic. The devotees were just weeping tears of prema. And of course, Narottam Das Thakur himself was weeping. So it was so intense with everybody just feeling this prema. And then Lord Shaitanya and all his associates appeared. Now, this, this was seen by everybody there, that Lord Shaitanya and the associates came. They had to have a huge platform because they were all dancing like anything. Many, many, many of the devotees who attended that festival wrote about when Lord Shaitanya came to this Gorbhidhima festival. So we can hardly imagine they were already immersed in prayer and then along comes Lord Chaitanya, Lord Nityananda, she had made an all the devotees and they were dancing there in ecstasy. So it was so, so wonderful, unbelievably wonderful for all the devotees. And it's described that the devotees' happiness knew no bounds. And it was also described that that appearance of Lord Chaitanya and his associates was an act of grace shown to Srinivas Acharya and Narottam Das Thakur. Because of their qualifications, the Lord came. But everybody got to associate with them and dance with them. So, uh, so that the next day, uh, there were two, two main days. There was an evening before and two main days. So again, there was a wonderful kirtan and Narottam Das Thakur was manifesting many beautiful symptoms of ecstatic love uh, as he sang in rapture. And uh, at one stage he just uh, fell down and became unconscious and they removed him from the kirtan area so the kirtan could still come on, go on. And it was three hours later that he recovered consciousness. So um, <clears throat> then the devotees that night, they spoke about Krishna's pastimes and Narottam Das Thakur was speaking on Krishna's pastime in such a way that everyone was very enchanted because this is a person who has love of God, you know, placed in his heart by Lord Chaitanya. So just to hear him speak on the pastimes, it's described that so many, you know, so much of his life was spent in tears of love. <laughs> So that was a wonderful festival and Srinivas Acharya remained there for a month um, and they associated wonderfully. Now Ramchandra Kaviraj is also mentioned in one of um, the Lord's bhajans as a great um, wonderful uh, philosopher but very high saintly devotee and Narottam and he would associate uh, a lot together. 
So, <clears throat> so Naratam Das Thakur preached very widely and he was able to deliver thousands of conditioned souls from material existence. And it's described that there's no end to his divine qualities because Lord Gauranga resides there in his heart eternally. So Naratam always served the devotees that came to Kettery very beautifully. Personally, he would come when someone would come. He would cool, he would give, serve them prasadam, make sure that they were comfortable. He was very much known for serving the Vaishnavas and he taught his disciples also to always take great care of the Vaishnavas. He also always instructed his um, disciples to chant 100,000 names at 64 rounds and it's described that he and many people came to him and they were they didn't believe that he was saintly so there are many many pastimes of Naratantastaku with all sorts of different working with all kinds of different people so it's described that uh, he delivered atheists he delivered highly learned brahmanas he delivered logicians mental speculators offenders and karmis people who are into karma yoga, um, by the touch of his lotus feet and of course by his beautiful instructions and kirtans. So his heart was always very pure and very blissful. So Naratam Das Thakur lived to an old age and um, <clears throat> at one time Ramchandra Kaviraj, who was his dear saintly friend, came to him and said, I, I want to go to Vrindavan, will you give me permission? So Naratam Des, of course, gave permission, and uh, Srinivas also gave permission, so he went to Vrindavan. But after a few, de <coughs> a few m months, he left and returned to his eternal Leela. So <clears throat> this was very shocking news to Srinivas Acharya and Naratam Das Thakur and they really grieved in separation so much so that Srinivas Acharya left his body in separation. So Naratam Das Thakur was just absolutely uh, drowning in an ocean of separation from these beautiful devotees and that's when he wrote this bhajan, Jayanilo Premadana because he was so heartbroken. But it's always a very beautiful, um, uh, meaningful, sort of um, potent um, bhajan, on this one, because it was written in that mood of so much grief and love for the Lord's devotees. So after this, um, Naratam Das Thakur went to a village called Kambilaya, and it's on the Ganga. So he he went into inside a temple of Mahaprabhu and he ordered all his devotees disciples to have a big kirtan. So there was a wonderful big kirtan in that temple. And um, after that kirtan, he went to Mother Ganga, and he, with tears in his eyes, he offered obeisances again and again, and he offered m many prayers to Mother Ganga. Then he entered into her, her waters and there was a loud kirtan everywhere with his disciples and devotees. And so then he requested two devotees to pour the Ganga water on his body. And then as the kirtan went on, the devotees watched in amazement as Naratam Das Thakur's body began to melt into the Ganga. So he then vanished from sight and the Ganga turned white like milk. And this place at Gambilaya, um, just a, month, a, month, a couple of months ago, I went to Vrindavan, and Mayapur and Vrindavan. But in, in Mayapur, I met the husband of a devote, a godbrother, whose wife had just taken a group of women to this Gambilaya for a, a darshan. They went there. It's quite some hours from Mayapur but they went there because it's still worshipped as a very special place where Narasam Das Thakur left his body. <clears throat> so it was on this holy day that he performed that pastime of leaving this planet and he entered into his eternal leela. So Prabhupada always said on these days 
These acharyas are offering their mercy on the appearance and disappearance day. We can beg them for their mercy. So um, we can understand the deep moods of Narutam Das Thakur just when we read his bhajans. And so, you know, whatever desire you may have to increase um, depth, uh, to, in, to um, because he was such a perfect, he did such perfect internal meditations to increase internal meditations, whatever um, um, we want to strengthen in, in our devotional service, we can request Narutam Das Thakur on, on this day. And um, uh, we, we know that Srila Prabhupada said his words crack like thunder within our hearts. <laughs> so we should take advantage of those words. So all glories to Srila Narutam Das Thakur. Mahashaya hymns called Kijai. Um, thank you very much. Has anybody got anything to add? Or <laughs> those books, um, Virambir, a king called Virambir, actually, uh, he had some astrologers, and they, the astrologers, had told him that this bullock cart is coming. They were actually plunderers. They used to, he was a bad king. <laughs> they used to plunder anybody who came through the kingdom. And his astrologers told him there's a great wealth coming through in these bullock carts. So they, the, it was the king that arranged the stealing of the uh, books. So it's, it was a very long process. Srinivasacharya went there and he ended up going to the court. And uh, after some time, it, it, there was a real sort of Mayavadi um, uh, Brahmin who was kind of in charge uh, at the court. Um, but after some time, Srinivasacharya actually challenged him. And the king could see that Srinivasacharya had defeated his Brahmin Pandit. Not only that, the king could ascertain from Srinivasacharya's um, persona that he was a, a beautiful, exalted devotee because his own pundit didn't have that effulgence and inner, you know, love radiating out that radiating out that um, Srinivasacharya had. So he took Srinivasacharya. He told Srinivasacharya, "Well, actually, you know, I took those books." And he took the king, took him in, and Srinivasacharya was offering respectful obeisances. He was so happy to see the king hadn't disturbed because when he saw there were books, he was like, "What am I going to do with these?" So they were still there. Um, and Srinivasacharya was so happy. But not only that, that king became, that king took initiation from Srinivasacharya, and many, many, many of those, including that bogus Brahman, Brahman Pandit, they also took initiation, and that king, kingdom became a Vaishnava kingdom. So when, when it happened that the books were stolen, they were just in shock and they didn't know what to do, but they did understand Krishna has a plan. And then when years later, when Srinivasacharya and Narottam Das actually met together, they were speaking about their time in Vrindavan, and they were talking about how Krishna had had such a plan for these books, you know, when the, the theft of the books had happened, how that was all Krishna's mercy. So, yeah, when we're dealing with these great saintly devotees, and the books themselves are completely transcendental, so nothing, you know, Krishna was protecting both the devotees and the books. So they were returned, and the devotees in Bengal, and the devotees in Orissa got the great mercy of the Goswami's books. Hare <laughs> Krishna. Thank you very much.